Right, it's 2018, the London Tattoo Show, and I'm with Mr. Alex Binney. And uh, it's good to see you again, Alex. It's been and, a while. Yeah, nice to see you. It's not been that long, Paul. I, no, I saw you last year, but... Yeah, but what I'm trying to say is, uh, this is the first convention you worked for a while? It's the first... Well, we've had a booth all the years of interview. We always had a booth, but I didn't actually sling yeah, ink, yeah. As, they, as they say. Um, for, I haven't done that for quite a few years, no, because just the shop was busy and I was more like helping out on the desk. Really. I, I prefer to stand around and chat to people to actually work. So I didn't actually work. But this year we got offered a free booth because we were with Vivian Lazonga, so because she got offered a free booth. So I thought I'll do, a, I'll, yeah. I'll do a bit just for fun. And it's been, it's been fun. It's been all right. I've enjoyed it, actually. And before we get on to talk about Mr. Sebastian, what I'd like to talk about, uh, why 1770? You changed the name of the shop? Well, yeah, because I had the interview there all those years, and the Bryant shop was called Interview Two. But when 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 Interview closed in London, um, which is out of my hands, it was to do with the lease being up and mm. rent 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 raises and all that kind of stuff. I just thought that it'd be nice to start a new chapter for the Bryant shop and call it Seventeen Seventy because I just wanted to get away. It, it was it was always going to be Interview Two, but it wasn't Interview in a sense on its own. I thought it'd be better to have its have its own identity, and so we so we gave it a new name. Yeah. As to as to why Seventeen Seventy, I've actually got a card. Um, about it, basically 1770. I just think it looks cool, but it was actually the it was the date Captain Cook's first voyage mm. started off in 1769, and, and and during 1770 he toured around New Zealand and landed in Australia. So it was during that first voyage that Cook and Western people first discovered kind of Polynesian yeah. tattooing oh, yeah. and what have you. And so that's that's why I got the date, but yeah. it just it's kind of like a nice. It's, it, it, I, I just think it's kind of fun. It rolls off the tongue. Yeah, it rolls off the tongue. Seventeen seventy. Yeah, and exactly. you've travelled extensively over New Zealand. And well, I've been to the I've been to New Zealand and to the Cook Islands. Yeah, I've not tra travelled extensively compared to some people, but I have been to New Zealand a couple of times. I've been to the Cook Islands. Um, um, yeah, because that is kind of the cradle in many ways of yeah. tattooing, isn't it? The Pacific, yeah. the, the Pacific Islands. Um, including Japan, of course. Japan counts as a Pacific island, and of mm. course that is very much part of our tattoo culture. So, uh, so it's interesting to go to those places for sure. Yeah, but, yeah. but moving forward, who I really wanted to talk about was Mr. Alan Oversby, Mr. Sebastian, and you was very good friends with him, weren't you? And, and uh, he, he needs to be remembered, doesn't he? People like Alan. yeah, I think that I think that he is unfortunately one of you know when I first started tattooing, I was I you know for a young guy like me who has got a bit of an art school background and for want of a better word, a little bit middle class, you know, there wasn't a lot of kind of role models that that were older. And obviously we had Lal and George and all that lot and I knew them and obviously I was, a, you know, went to every Dunstable, I think, apart from one. So I was around, but Mr. Sebastian was slightly different. He was like a kind of slightly different character. He came from a different background. He, he had a different. Red, he? he had a different approach. Well, he he'd been to art school. He he was an art school teacher actually before he became ta before he started ta tattooing and piercing, of course. So it, he came from a different background from a lot of what the other old school English guys had come from, and um, I got to know him and got tattooed by him because he was involved with the sort of well Genesis Peoridge, who was part of the Throbbing Gristle and the kind of Psychic TV kind of underground industrial for want of a better word kind of movement so this is Sebastian who pierced and tattooed him and some of that crowd and and because and because I was kind of on that scene the kind of industrial scene as it were um, in my like early 20s early to mid 20s I got pierced and tattooed by Mr Sebastian because um, he was around and he was different he was kind of refreshingly different yeah so um, and I think that yeah it is a shame in a way that He's been slightly overlooked in in, in London, British or London tattoo culture. He was a great tattooist. A lot of people overlooked that bit, part of him, didn't they? Yeah. Well, he was he was. I mean, you could say in a way that he pioneered fine line and dot work. Yeah. Yeah. In in he pioneered that style way before anybody else. Some of that single needle stuff I've seen him do. Yeah. It's wonderful. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole skeletons I've seen him do, and they look beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he was he was very he was yeah he was he was an interesting guy, and he tattooed quite differently from everybody else at the mm. time. He was very much a lone wolf, you know. Um, he had his little private studio, um, and he was very much a lone wolf and just just did his own thing. Although, of course, he was at Dunstable. He's, he's yeah. come to the conventions and he used to enjoy all that. And he well, was very about. smartly dressed. And, and he, he was an unusual, un, un, unusual looking character, you could say. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. so, getting back to today, what do you think of how it's gone now with the tattoo scene, the conventions? Uh, well, I mean, I've been coming here. I guess I've come to every every one of these. You know, I went to all the ones that when they were down at Brick Lane. I went to all of them. You know. I mean, I guess someone like us has been around tattooing all these years. 
it's just an absolute fixture. You can't not come, yeah, really. Yeah. You can't not come. It's just part of the it's part of the calendar. Weirdly enough, of course, it's the same. Uh, Dunstable was always in September. Mm. So for the last 30 or more years, my kind of life to a degree is revolved around September. September's Dunstable, yeah. and now of course September's here, and uh, it's just part of the tattoo calendar. As to like what I think of it, I mean, it's hard to know what to think. It's just so big now compared yeah. to what it was. It's, there's no doubt it is. I, I probably, for what, I, it might sound bad saying this, but possibly less friendly than it mm. was. I think that there's possibly a bit. It's so big now it's, that any scene that gets really big, I think, it has to get. It gets more kind of fragmented because yeah. it's too big. In the early Dunstable days, and I always remember those Amsterdam conventions that Hank put on, which were just great. Um, the whole scene was so much smaller. Actually, I was chatting to someone yesterday here, I can't remember who it was, and we're about the old days, and they were saying, and they're probably right, when we started off, there was probably about the same amount of tattooists in the world yeah, that yeah. there are in this in this, in this this building now. Yeah. I don't know how many tattooists there are here. What, what 500, yeah, 600? Uh, yeah. Something like that. I mean, probably there was literally not many more tattooists in the world. I remember when there was the only world. six tattooists in the whole of London. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I don't know if I do that. In the one street, isn't there? Yeah. there can literally be that. Yeah. yeah, it's insane. It's insane how big it's got. So it obviously, you know, I, 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 tattooing is like any other market forces. Market forces define how you know yeah. if, if it can continue, and, and obviously it is continuing. Um, but it's not. I, I would say it's not as friendly. You can't know everybody. It used no. to be you'd be walking around some of those earlier conventions, and all the kind of main names were literally in one room. And that was at the next convention and all, weren't they? And you I mean, knew them all. Them, yeah. you, 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 I mean, you know, you got to know them all because there were so few of you. And I, I, of course, at that time was very young and enthusiastic and <coughs> keen to meet people. So um, they were fun times, but this is fun too. And I guess it's hard to know, isn't it? For, yeah. a, for a sort of a guy or girl in their mid twenties who, who are just starting to get into it. You know, they've been tattooed a couple of years and they're, and they're traveling a little bit and they're starting to meet people and they're coming here. I, I, I imagine the, exci the, the excitement yeah. must be phenomenal for them because it's all new to them, you know. I'm afraid some, some of us old types, you know, it's a little bit like, here we go again, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, it's, but it's fun, I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Absolutely, I wouldn't miss it for the world. That's about it, Max. Alex, always nice. a pleasure to meet you. All right. I, I, must have been 35 years ago we first met. Oh, oh must yeah, be. well, yeah, I mean, you're, yeah, you're, you're, I guess you're, you're a fixture. We're you know. the dinosaurs now. Yeah, you're yeah. The, well, I don't, know about, I don't know about me. I like to think I've got a, a few <laughs> years left in me, but, um, yeah, no, I remember you from, you know, when you used to be, when you used to be with Lionel and what yeah. have you, and, uh, yeah, you, you're like, you've always been here, haven't you? Paul Many Zeiss, you know. always, yeah. always been here, so.